Hello, this is Mark Holmes from Via Satellite for another of our Thursday morning conversations. And we have something a little bit different for you today. And there is a satellite link in case you think I've gone a little bit mad, which I wouldn't blame you. We have Lavia Nielsen, who's one of uh, the UK's top athletes. And so we're going to be having a, a conversation with Lavia. But we also have Kyle Whitehill, the CEO of Avanti, and talking about a very interesting partnership between uh, Avanti and, and Lavia. So uh, we'll, we'll get onto that in a bit, but but uh, Lavia, tell us a little bit, I mean, tell us a little bit about how your preparations are, uh, are going and what, what has it been like to be, an, to be an athlete over the last year? Yeah, it's been very, very interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like a completely different athlete. I feel like COVID and the pandemic and lockdown and everything has taught me so much about myself. Um, I'm about five and a half weeks away from opening my season, which is very, very exciting. I feel like it's been a very sort of long time um, between sort of my last championship campaign and then the Olympic campaign this year. Um, preparation has gone well. I can't complain. I'm probably in the best shape that I've ever been in, which is really, really exciting. But um, in terms of the past year, it's been <laughs> challenging to say the least. I felt like I've had to massively adapt week on week and we've just sort of taken it day by day. Um, but yeah, COVID has taught me so much and um, I think I have a lot of lessons to take into this season, but very, very excited to get started. And um, we recently just had the European Indoor Championships, um, which was the first championships that um, the sport has had in about 15 months. So to be able to watch that on my television screen, unfortunately I didn't go, but to be able to watch that on my television screen just gave me so much confidence for the season ahead. You know, a lot of people are still asking me if the Olympics are gonna go ahead and whether we're gonna have a season. So to see that on the TV screen was, um, really reassuring and uh, got me really excited to start competing soon. Oh, I, I have to ask about the Olympics because it seems that it changes. It, it now seems maybe that it'll take place, but maybe not international fans and visitors. And, and what are your thoughts on that? Are? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're kept in constant communication with um, the IOC over um, in Switzerland, but also the local organising committee in Japan. So yeah. the recent news I think came out this week was that there will be no crowds which yeah. was sort of a given I think we were all expecting that um and then we're in constant communication with Team GB and the British Olympic Association and I think there's some news about the village so um of course that's a massive aspect of the Olympic Games some of us were thinking maybe there won't be a village and then there'll be sort of um social bubbles between countries but we've been told that there will be a village but that we won't be able to stay there for as long as we usually would so I think you usually go about two weeks before your competition yeah. whereas now we're told we can actually only go in five days before our event so that becomes very difficult because in athletics there's about 20 different events so five days before and then we have to leave 48 hours after so very strict rules but i think team gb are, are hoping that we will go to um, a nearby city to go to yokohama for our holding camp so i'm confident that they'll go ahead albeit adapted but it'll be really exciting nonetheless and are you, will you be doing the 400 meters and the relay are, are they correct hopefully um i've the qualification process is twofold so you have to run a certain time standard which i've ticked off and then this summer hopefully um go to the british trials and uh, come first or second that will secure my spot excellent and and do you, do you think i mean it's sort of interesting when you watch sports without without crowds and we've seen a number of sports without crowds do you think it potentially um we, we it makes it it levels things up in any way do we think do you think we maybe get more sort of surprise results in, in athletics that that perhaps you maybe you wouldn't get if there were like if there was like a full stadium it's been strange so i mean i feel like most of us are actually quite used to competing without crowds um 2020 yeah. was a very strange year competitively i think um there's a stadium that i love in stockholm it's one of the oldest olympic stadiums in the world and i love competing there usually because the crowd is so close and it really does lift you up um and um yeah the, the gun went off and all i could hear was the footsteps of my competitors it was very strange <laughs> so it does um i feel like if athletes and staff and you know management teams are there it can kind of create a bit of an atmosphere like athletes are amazing at doing that um but i feel like it would make a difference at the olympic games um you know that's really one of when you want to be in your peak um shape and really bring out the best performance and so we'll see we'll see what it's like and the last world championships we had were in doha yeah. where um the crowds were hardly ever there <laughs> just because of the nature of the sport in that country so um i think we are we are quite used to it so it'll be okay do, do you i mean 
don't know if you can share with us your actual um, aspirations in, in terms of, of Tokyo. Um, um, what, what, what would be a, a good, um, I mean, aside from competing and actually being able to compete and enjoying competing, um, do you have any sort of targets for what you hope to achieve there? Yeah, I've got a few goals in my mind. Um, so I would hope to make the Olympic final. That would be a dream come true. Um, from a British standpoint, um, I was one of the first women to break 51 seconds in about four or five years. And it's been about eight years since someone has broken 50 seconds. So I'm hoping to break 50 seconds this year. That would be a, a huge goal. I think only five British women have ever done it before. So hoping, fingers crossed, to be the sixth woman. Um, and that would put me in a good place. I think once you make the final, anything could happen. We've seen it so many times that... Um, once you're there and the adrenaline and everything excitement and that's when you're in your peak shape anything can happen so yeah the goal in my my in my head the whole winter has been to to make the olympic final fantastic and do you i mean do you believe i mean in terms of uh, and again i don't know 400 meter athletes that well so i apologize for any any ignorance I'm asking you. <laughs> um, I think about 400. in terms of when your potential peak is as an athlete do you still feel there's a a lot more to come that you know maybe in the next two or three years you're going to take maybe a, a big step up and uh, i mean when where, how do you sort of see like when you feel your peak is will be as an athlete so on average it's usually um towards your late 20s and um, it takes especially the 400 it takes ages to build that stamina the speed the power that you need um I turned 25 this weekend and I feel like I'm actually coming into sort of my peak shape. Um, I feel, especially in the past year, that everything has sort of fallen into place. My team is, is amazing and they've uh, they've really worked hard to step up my speed and everything this year. So, um, and I'm really starting to learn the event, really becoming um, aware of, you know, what works for me and uh, what I need to do to run a faster time. So, um, yeah, it'll be, I think this year, I always assume that this would be my first Olympic Games and I'm going to do two more, so hopefully 2024 okay. and 28. Um, so, yeah, I feel like, you know, it would be a good opportunity and a good experience to go to this Olympic Games. Um, and obviously I'd want to do the best that I can, but I feel I do feel that my best is yet to come in the next few years. And I think this is, a, it feels almost like a starting point and a, a new beginning. Fantastic. Um, before we get on to the partnership with uh, Avanti, we, we, as Carl knows, we often with these conversations like talk a little bit about what people have been doing away from lockdown and what music they've been listening to, what dramas they've been watching. So, uh, Lavia, what sort of is anything on, on Netflix or uh, normal TV that you particularly enjoyed? Any movies, dramas? What's um, any recommendations for us? It's been really strange. I've gone back to watching things from ages ago. So I started watching Grey's Anatomy at the start of lockdown <laughs> because it was like, I was like, there's 15 seasons, so I could probably get, that would get me through lockdown, which I love. Um, and I've also really strangely started watching MTV Catfish. <laughs> which, um, <laughs> and the only reason is because I'm, I love it. It's just so much fun. And the, um, the, the, the two hosts started um, recording it over Zoom and I thought what an incredible time to, what a great opportunity to start doing that when everyone else is on Zoom. And that was really, really creative. So I really love doing that. But other than that, like I, I pretty much kept my, the same training schedule. So I felt like I never had that sort of break away from work. So things sort of carried on as, as normal, I guess, for me, um, apart from adapting a few things. So, wow. yeah. Uh, we've not heard MTV Catfish mentioned before. Oh, it's brilliant. I'd highly <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> yeah, there'll be a few people in our industry Googling that now. Um, in terms of music, what sort of music do you like? Do you have any particular favourite artists? or? Um, yeah, Tame Impala got me through lockdown pretty much. Okay. Love Tame Impala. Um, yeah, I got such a, an array of different music genres with different tastes. Um, yeah, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I'll have to look through my playlists. <laughs> no, no worries. Well, let, let's, let's get Kyle into the conversation now, because obviously one of the reasons we were able to talk to you today was uh, we saw the, uh, you know, the announcement last week of, uh, you know, the, the two of you getting together, um, Avanti and um, you getting together in this partnership. Kyle, tell us a little bit. I mean, it, I, I've, I mean, I get thousands of press releases and, and this one really stood out to me how did the, how did the, the partnership come about Can you tell us a little bit of the, the background of it yeah sure so i mean first of all what i'd like to point out that i was the scottish under 16 javelin champion back in 1978 so i think my my credentials 
around the the kind of like elite athlete level are well established. Um, this started for me back in um, 2017 when we started sponsoring Akani Sambini, the South African sprinter. Okay. And it was all about speed and resilience and fat. We liked fast as well. And then I went to see the Muller Games back in um, summer of 2019. That was the first athletics event I'd been at for like years and years and years. Really enjoyed that. And then it really triggered when Black Lives Matter happened um, back in 2020. And it was such a shock because, you know, many of us were conscious of, of racism, but the explosion that came from the George Floyd thing and the escalation of the Black Lives Matters. And one of the conversations we'd had internally was that everybody rushed out to talk about it and say they condemned racism and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I was quite quiet about it because I was listening to what people were saying. And so we decided eventually towards the middle to end of last year that we wanted to say something. We wanted to have a platform. But I just felt at that point that a white middle-aged male having a voice and this one wasn't as powerful. So I asked if Akani Sambini and Isaac Chamberlain, the boxer, would also um, help us with that. And we didn't have a female voice, so we asked um, someone to find us a strong female voice, and we got really lucky because he found Lavia. And I met her sort of mid to, yeah, I think it was around mid of last year. And so Lavia's done two or three things for us internally. And um, and then it came to a final head, but I think it was probably a couple of months ago when we had Isaac Akani and Lavia on talking about stuff to all of our staff. And afterwards I said to my team, I would like her to be the spokesperson for Avanti going forward because yeah, she's a very talented athlete, but also Lavia has some very strong opinions and takes no crap off me and makes sure that I'm very clear about what's right or wrong in her opinion. And I think that's really important nowadays that um, someone who's got strong opinions and a young person from a different type of background from ours has a voice. So that's when we came up with the concept of, okay, great, so let's create a partnership. So what you'll see from us over the next few months is where Lavia is going to be talking externally about the things that Avanti do. So she's not just going to be talking about resilience and strength and fast and so on, which is her career, because she's effectively the CEO of her athletics career. But she's going to be talking about the stuff that Avanti are doing, because that really resonates with her as well the schools programs, helping marginalized girls in Kenya, you know, driving broadband to the unconnected across Africa. I think these are things that her passion and commitment will really help us to cut through. No, that, that's fantastic. And, and Lavia, from your perspective, I, I assume you, you didn't necessarily know huge amounts about the satellite sector before uh, Avanti got in touch. What, what's it been like? I mean, what, you know, what's it been like from your, your perspective and, and, what, and what are you learning through, the, through this partnership? Yeah, it's amazing. I think the first time that I, I, came, I came into the office, luckily, it was still during the pandemic, but we were still able to meet each other. So it was nice to meet everyone um, face to face. And I think one of the most important things that I really... Um, adored about Avanti, especially with Carl's, is really, really open about learning. Um, you know, I came in primarily to talk about the Black Lives Matter movement and ending racism and speaking yeah. eternally with the entire team. All who seemed like a really close family and that was just so amazing to see. But Carl was really open. He wanted to ask, you know, uncomfortable questions. So Carl, when you say, you know, I'm, I'm really honest about my opinions, it was really easy for me to do that because, you know, the, the, the entire organization wanted to learn something new. I'm gonna, sorry, my dog is barking. <laughs> I'm gonna just quickly let him inside. Um, so yeah, so it was it was very very. I'm so sorry. It's okay. These the are... on exactly the same thing as the dog. The dog wanted attention. Wanted <laughs> so attention. the dog just, like stop talking to everyone else and not giving me attention. Right. We've had dogs and cats take part in in um, Thursday morning conversations before. And I'm I think that's dog. That's the reason okay. why because it's more of a, you know, more of a personal touch. So, so sorry, you were, you were saying? Yeah, so it was very easy for me to, to you know, give my opinions. Um, I felt like it was almost back and forth. You know, I would say something and people would agree or, you know, Kyle would say something, I would agree. And it was, it was really, really easy for me to do that. And so um, I'm excited to learn more about the satellites industry. I must be honest, because I don't know much about it. <laughs> But um, I think I think a lot of Avanti's values really um, align with mine. I think over the past year or so, 
you know, I've learned so much about about resilience and staying motivated and staying disciplined and adapting and, you know, um, learning through these challenges, the type of person that, you know, we've all changed, you know, it's been a very challenging time. So just learning about the person that you, you're about to be, you know, coming out of this pandemic, hopefully soon. Um, and so I, I've always, you know, thought that sport is very, very powerful. Um, I've learned firsthand the psychological impact that it has on, on development, you know, character development. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just excited to be able to use my voice and um, hopefully inspire more people and teach people and uh, enforce some sort of change. I think that's great. Uh, if there's one thing I feel this industry needs, it needs more role models and it needs to get more young people involved. And there's a lot more to the the space industry than being an astronaut. And there's many great careers. And I think, um, you know, it, it, it's great because, I, you know, as Kyle says, uh, you know, for, for many years, I think the industry has struggled to attract young young people to join because it hasn't done a, a great job in in saying there's multiple careers within the industry and i think also i mean you talked about the the political movement and one of the great things about the satellite industry is it it, it really does aim to sort of level up society by bringing connectivity to to villages so you know young young girls young boys in, in remote villages can have access to the same technologies that, that we take for granted and that they can build their knowledge and, and they can take part in a in a global community so no i really commend you i think it's it's great it's a it's a, a fantastic um a fantastic partnership so what's what's next for it i mean you, you know you've you've announced it you've 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 given some some talks to Avanti employees, one or two things. How, where does it go from here? Shall I answer that? Yeah. So where it goes from here is that we're now creating a set of, let's call them mini podcasts. So Lavia will be the um, presenter for the podcast where we'll, I mean, probably we'll pick, like, for example, now that we have a huge rural rollout in Nigeria going on right now, multiple thousand sites with MTN, connecting villages that have never had access to technology. So Lavia would be the, let's call it the presenter for that. We've got the I'm Language Schools program in Kenya that we want to bring alive. So the stuff that this year that we want her to be the person who's going to be talking about it, we'd love that to be physical as well, because we all want to travel, right? So uh, we all want to get on the plane to Nigeria. We want to get back on the plane to Kenya. And, and I think that's something that I've always been really passionate about is when someone like Lavia, because Lavia does other stuff to, to help the world already, right, as an ambassador. And I think when you see someone who's an iconic role model talking about, wow, I'm standing in a small village in Nigeria, and it's the first day that they've had access to mobility and they can make a phone call. And the, the change of tone in the village is like, I mean, it's believable. So many times when I was in Borofone, I saw that same thing. And I think that her passion and commitment and excitement and enthusiasm will help us bring that to life. Excellent. Uh, Lavia, one question I wanted to ask is, I mean, you talked about the, the, we talked about the Black Lives Matter, the George Floyd, we've talked about the pandemic. Did you sort of feel at some point over last year that you felt you wanted to sort of raise your voice even more and there was more that you felt you wanted to do um, in order to, to bring about some of, some of the change we all want to see? Yeah, it was a, around the Black Lives Matter movement. It was very, very difficult for me. Um, I shared quite a few things on my social media and got quite a positive response from that. Um, but I, a bit like Kyle, decided not to share anything personally. I found it very difficult, especially yeah. being from a, a mixed race background, you know, not quite black enough and not quite white enough. It was a very difficult part um, time for me to sort of navigate. Um, but then, you know, when I came to Vanti the first time, I think a lot of people could resonate with that. And then it just made me realize that actually any voice or any story is an important one and it's all contributing to the same to the same movement. Um it's still ongoing, you know, it's not it's not by any means over. So um yeah, I just think it's an, an it's exciting opportunity to be able to use my voice and you know, I, I think a lot of people look to sports people um as an example, as a you know, we've got such an incredible platform and a and a great responsibility to share what we go through, our stories, our journeys and everything. So it's given me the confidence to maybe speak up more. Um, and yeah, just very, very excited to hopefully share that with a lot more people. I, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I have daughters myself and, um, and um, 
you know, part of a mixed race family. So I think having them have role models is is fantastic. And I think in our industry as well, um, you know, it's uh, it's an industry that could use more diverse voices and you know different voices. So, you know, I think it's a you know a great partnership. We should, we should get every success and hope there's more of these happening in in our sort of uh, sector going forward. Um, you know, I would sort of, uh, it, it's sort of very interesting. I mean, we talk about athletics and, you know, what, what what's it been like as sort of a, you know, I mean, have you encountered much racism, you know, in like professionally? I mean, I mean, what's it been like from your point of view? I'm just curious. Oh, athletics is a very is a very fair sport. They call it the poor yeah. man's sport because all you really need is came to the. I'm not sure if you're aware of the Casa Semenya case. Are you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, that I think I I said something on Twitter at the time, and I got quite a bit of backlash <laughs> to quickly delete my tweets. Um, and it was yeah, there's a lot of heated conversations, a lot of it surrounding racism and whether you know she was a, a white athlete from a western country whether she'd be going through the same thing and i think that kind of opened a lot of people's eyes to um not the sport itself i think the people in the sport are amazing but when it comes to management roles and people at the top you know who are we hiring who are the people are, do we have enough diversity up there yeah. and um is it is it trickling down you know quite fair i think also my coach she's a black female she is always one to share experiences of uh not getting job roles or not being able to get the same experiences or opportunities. And so, and she's, you know, she's 53 years old. So I think she's gone through quite a journey. You know, she was competing in the nineties and the early two thousands and she's seen a lot of change, but it's quite not where she would want it to be. And I, I can agree with that. I think even within the UK, you look at the people who are at the top and we've only recently had, um, a few females come into those management roles but i would really really like to see more people of color more women of color at the top yeah. um and yeah i think it would be amazing for the athletes who come through and will eventually end up getting those jobs i think it's mostly ex-athletes who can teach us a lot and who can lead the organization the right way so if we can get more people like that now then it would inspire those who are sort of coming towards the, the end of their competitive careers to start taking up those those roles. No, I agree 100%. Uh, well, we're, we're all virtually out of time. So what I want to, you know, I just want to say firstly a big, a big thank you to uh, um, Lavia for, for taking the time. I mean, it's a, a very different conversation than we usually have for via satellite. So uh, appreciate um, you taking the time to talk to us today. To talk to us today. Obviously, oh, wish to wish you the best of luck for for the season um uh, hope you can continue to get personal bests and uh be you know get to that 50 second mark and also you know uh, you know we'll be watching the olympics now and uh you know willing you on we're we're hopeful that well firstly we want you to get to the final because i know that's your target and then once you get to the final hopefully you know fingers crossed maybe even get a medal and and well in the relay it sounds like you know um you know this is a great partnership we know carl very well and you know i, I applaud i applaud both of you I, I applaud avanti for for doing this kind of partnership and uh, you know i applaud you for you know for getting involved and raising your voice and and being you know a very positive role model not just for people in the satellite industry but but people generally like um you know young kids and uh, it, it, i think it's really great to see so you know this is this has been a really enjoyable conversation carl i also wish you all the best and avanti for for the year i, I know we we talk uh, fairly regularly but i know it's a big year for you as well and uh, you know i think you're doing a great job there and you know this partnership is again evidence of some really creative um thinking um in our industry so i applaud you for that uh wish you both the best of luck to stay uh, safe and healthy and uh and uh look forward to talking to you both again soon yeah you too thank you thank so much you very much thank you thank you thank you it's been a real pleasure thank you for those kind words as well appreciate it so much